What's up guys and welcome to this new series and I'm pretty excited about tonight's topic. Now the theme for this whole series is prophets. Now some of you guys might have seen people today that in churches that use that title for themselves. They call themselves prophets. Um, that's not the kind of prophet I'm talking about here. Oftentimes we see these people that claim to be prophets speaking all kinds of things that they claim God is telling them to say and to, to speak over you. Um, and then those things don't happen, right? They, they prophesy something and then they say they must have misheard because um, they know better than try to tarnish God's reputation, right? But if you call yourself a prophet, you prophesy about something and then that thing doesn't happen. Guys, what does that make you? It makes you a false prophet. Now, don't get me wrong. God still totally speaks through other people today, but it's through the Holy Spirit inside of them, not like the prophets of the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, prophets had a pretty tough job. They were the spokesperson for God, and most of the time, they didn't have great news for the people, you know? So when people saw a prophet coming into town, oftentimes they would kind of keep their distance, they would try to act like he wasn't there because they just didn't want to hear what he had to say. And for the next couple of weeks, we're gonna look at a couple of prophets from the Old Testament and the amazing things that they did to demonstrate God's will for his people at that time. Tonight, we're actually going to look at a cool story from Elisha's life. Now, Elisha followed another amazing prophet named Elijah, right? You can imagine how hard that was to have names so close and doing ministry together at the same time. Someone would probably yell, Elisha, right? And they both would kind of probably turn and look. In 2 Kings 6, we see a very interesting interaction with Elisha, the prophet. Um, some backstory here first. Elisha, Jah, the older dude, see I messed it up too, had started a school for prophets to train the men that God would use to speak to the people. Now the school, it continued to grow after Elisha took over so much, in fact, that one of the campuses, they had several, one of the campuses was in the process of expanding its uh, buildings to train more people in ministry. And there was a Home Depot in the city of Gilgal, which is where this campus was located. So they borrowed an ax and they went down to the edge of the river to start harvesting trees so that they could build more buildings for the school to house these guys in training. Taking down a tree by hand is no easy task, right? It's, it's tiring. The guys were taking turns chopping down trees until something happened that nobody was prepared for. So let's pick it up in 2 Kings 6 verse 1. Now the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, See the place where we dwell under your charge is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan and each of us get there a log and let us make a place for us to dwell there. And he answered, go. And then one of them said, be pleased to go with your servants. And he answered, I will go. And so he went with them. And when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. But as one was felling a log, his ax head fell into the water and he cried out, Alas, my master, it was borrowed. Now, this might sound kind of like a dumb problem, but for the school and especially for the guy that lost the axe head, guys, this was serious. There are a couple of things that we can take from the story up to this point. First of all, that even when we're doing God's will, we are still going to face some misfortune, some, some bad days, right? Bad things are going to happen to us and around us, even when we're doing our best to live like Jesus. These guys were putting in some hard work to make enough room for new people to be trained in ministry, and now the momentum ground to a halt because of this lost accent. Oftentimes, we feel like we're on fire for God, and then something knocks us off course, and guys, we're left staring at our plans sinking into the river, kind of like that, right? In those moments, we don't need to panic. God was not surprised by the ex head flying off. He's not surprised when bad things happen to us either. He has a plan for all of it. Now, another problem for these guys is the fact that the ax, it was borrowed. Now, some of you guys might be the kind of people that don't take care of things that you borrow from other people. That's not me. That's not how I'm wired. Um, I want to be sure that when I return the item, it's in better condition than when I borrowed it to begin with. If this was me in the story today, as I was chopping down these trees, I would be thinking in my head and making a mental note to make sure I had that ax sharpened and oiled and ready to give back when I got done with it. And scripture lets us know that this man was upset about losing the ax head, right? He recognized that it was a problem because it was borrowed. The prophet school, it didn't have a huge budget to operate on. The iron was really expensive at the time. And the man who lost the ax head would have to work for the person he borrowed it from to make up for that loss. It would probably take a long time to pay it off, and he probably would even have to pull out of school 
um, to have enough time to work off that debt that the axe head caused. The final problem facing these guys is that the axe head was iron. Guess what? Iron doesn't float, right? The axe head sunk to the bottom in what might have seemed like some kind of slow motion moment to the guy that was watching it go, but to everyone else around them at the river, it was probably a quick splash and then the axe head was lost to the river forever. It didn't slowly float down. That thing dropped straight to the mud on the bottom. And so what did the prophet Elisha do? Remember, he had gone down to the river with them after they asked him to go. So let's see what the prophet does in 2 Kings 6, 6 and 7. It says, Then the man of God said, Where did it fall? And when he showed him the place, he cut off a stick, threw it in there, and made the iron float. And he said, Take it up. So he reached out his hand and took it. Man, I love this part. Like, this is weird, right? Elisha calmly asked where the axe head went into the water. He knew God had a plan for the situation. So after they showed him where it had splashed down, Elisha took a piece of wood, like a stick he was playing with or whittling with, just broke it off, threw it in the river, and then something miraculous happened. The axe head, it popped up to the top of the water, floating just like a leaf on top. Keep in mind, guys, the, the guys that were there, they were all prophets in training. They should be used to God doing miraculous things, but this moment still surprised them. It made no sense. Iron shouldn't float, and that axe head should have been lost forever. But Elisha knew that God had a plan to restore it. You think there's some, some cool connection to ministry, and then the, the story was going to continue on, guys, but the author of 2 Kings immediately shifts to another event right after the man picks up the axe head. Um, th this is the end of the story, but there are some really cool things that we can take away from the story and apply in our own lives. So let me start by eliminating something um, that we can't take away, cannot take away from the story. If you drop your AirPods into the Savannah River while you're hanging around on River Street, don't throw a stick at them thinking they're going to float up and reappear. It's just, this isn't an instruction manual on how to recover things that are sunk. God allowed this miracle for a specific purpose and for a specific time only. They needed the ax to finish the building of the school, and God allowed iron to float for Elisha. But God has something for you in this story as well. There are actually three points that we can take away from this strange story. First of all, admit that you need God. When the worker lost the axe head, he immediately reached out for help. He realized that he was incapable of fixing the situation and he needed some assistance. And guys, we can't let our pride get in the way of God's grace. When we think that we can do it all on our own, man, we miss out on the forgiveness and the help that God offers us as his children. Just like the worker ran to the prophet Elisha for help, when life gets to be too much or hope seems lost, guys, we can run to Jesus. He is able to do the miraculous and he already has the plan in place for our salvation figured out and he purchased it himself. We just need to start by admitting that we can't fix it. The second thing we can take away is identify where we lost our usefulness. Guys, we all go through seasons where we feel like we are close to God and then we have other seasons where we feel like he is distant from us. We have to be honest and we have to figure out what has pulled our attention away from God in those dull seasons of our spiritual life. Elisha asked the worker where he lost the ax head. That location is where restoration had to start for them. And in our lives, we need to ask God to show us where we have lost our edge as well. We know something is off in our walk with God, but we just don't know where to start fixing that. We can't recognize the behavior that has gotten in the way or the, possibly even the friendship that's pulling us away from God. We need his help to find that. And finally, we have to work with God's plan for our restoration. Now, when the ax head bobbed back up to the top of the river, it didn't just like levitate over and reattach itself to the ax handle, right? Elisha told the worker that he had to pick it up himself. He had lost it, and now he would recover it with God's help. And when we find forgiveness in Jesus, we just need to be open in working with God instead of holding on to our past lives and our past behaviors. We aren't doing any good pretending that we were the people we were before Jesus. Be part of the process and see the amazing things that God wants to do in your life. Guys, I can't wait for y'all to talk some more about this in small groups. Hope you'll have a great night. We'll see you soon.